So in our discussion on self-fractionation, we mentioned eight different types of methods that we can use to basically purify proteins, to isolate proteins from a mixture of different types of proteins. So in this lecture, we're going to focus on one of those methods. We're going to discuss salting out. So we're going to see what salting out is, what property of proteins it uses, and then we're going to look at a specific example when we can use salting out efficiently. So let's begin by discussing what a protein is. So proteins are these sequences of amino acids. And inside our body, the proteins are composed of 20 different types of amino acids. Now, some of these amino acids are hydrophobic, some of them are hydrophilic. And when you place the protein into an aqueous solution, it's the hydrophilic amino acids that will be found on the surface interacting with the polar water molecules forming hydrogen bonds, while the hydrophobic amino acids will be found inside that protein in the core. So we're, we're basically going to get the following diagram. So this is our protein. The protein core consists of a nonpolar section, while the surface of the protein consists of the blue section that is basically the hydrophilic section the hydrophilic amino acids and these water molecules will form hydrogen bonds with those hydrophilic amino acids found on the surface of that protein molecule now the extent to which a given protein is soluble in water basically depends on the number of hydrophilic amino acids that are found on the surface of that protein and generally on that protein so let's suppose we have a beaker and in that beaker we have pure water and to the pure water we add one type of protein. Now when we add that protein to our water the protein will dissolve and what we'll get is the following situation. So let's suppose we have the water, we place the, uh, uh, we place the protein molecules into our water and what will happen is these protein molecules will exist as individual entities. They will not be combined, they will exist as individual molecules and that's because inside that pure water we have enough water molecules to basically surround the hydrophilic section of our protein and stabilize that protein structure via hydrogen bonds. So we see in pure water we have plenty of water molecules present that can interact with the charged and hydrophilic sections, hydrophilic amino acids of that protein. Now, what we want to basically ask right now is, what happens when we add salt into our pure water solution that contains dissolved protein molecules? So we can add, for example, sodium chloride. We can add another type of salt, for example, ammonium sulfate, as we'll see in just a moment. So as soon as we begin to add our salt, what will begin to happen is the solubility of that protein in the water will begin to decrease. And not only that, if we continue adding more salt, eventually we're going to reach a certain specific concentration of salt. And in that valley, what happens is that protein will become insoluble in that solution. And that means the protein will begin to precipitate out of the solution. It will crystallize and form the solid state. And this is what we call salting out. So we know what salting out is, but why does it actually take place? Well, to see why it takes place, let's take a look at the following picture. So let's suppose we begin to add our sodium chloride molecules. As soon as we add the sodium chloride molecules, the ionic bond holding the sodium chloride will break. And what happens is when we dissociate the two, atoms, they will form ions. So we're going to have a bunch of positively charged sodium ions and a bunch of negatively charged chloride ions floating around in our aqueous solution. Now, because we don't increase or decrease the amount of water molecules present inside our mixture, what that means is the number of hydrogen bonds that are available to interact with the hydrophilic amino acids of the protein will decrease. 
And if we decrease the amount of stabilizing hydrogen bonds interacting with our protein, that will destabilize the structure of these individual proteins. And what that means is, if we destabilize the structure of these individual molecules, they will begin to aggregate. And that's because by aggregating, by interacting between the nonpolar sections of these amino acids, that will enter and stabilize the structure of this entire aggregate molecule. And so we see that as we add the salt into our mixture, because some of those water molecules that were interacting with the protein before are now forming hydrogen bonds with these ions, dissolved ions, we have less H bonds to basically stabilize the protein. And so the protein begins to aggregate. And by aggregating, it stabilizes the protein structure because it decreases the amount of surface area that is exposed to that water. So before, the entire surface area of these proteins were exposed, but now only these sections are exposed, and this section here is not exposed to the water. And so what that means is it accommodates that decrease in hydrogen bonds that results as a result of the addition of that salt into our mixture. So when we add salt, the charged ions interact with water, and this means that there are less solvent water molecules to interact with the protein. And as a result, to stabilize that structure, protein molecules begin to aggregate, and that is what causes precipitation, crystallization out of the solution, and this is known as salting out. So, an application of salting out is basically purification, so purifying our proteins, as we'll see in just a moment. Now, this can be done because different proteins are composed of different amino acids, and different amino acids contain different hydrophilic and hydrophobic natures. So, because proteins consist of different variation of amino acids, they have different solubilities in water, and that means the salt concentration at which proteins salt out will differ from one protein to another. And so if we have two different proteins in, let's say an aqueous solution, and those two different proteins have a big variation in their salt concentration at which they salt out, we can basically purify them and separate them by using the salting out method. So let's see exactly what we mean. So salting out can be used to isolate a protein of interest from a mixture of different proteins. And in our example, we're going to look at a mixture of two proteins. So one of these proteins is a blood clotting protein known as fibrinogen. And another protein is serum albumin. And this is the protein that carries lipids, for example, fatty acids and cholesterol inside our blood plasma. Now for fibrinogen, which is shown in green, this protein requires a concentration of 0.8 molar of ammonium sulfate to basically precipitate. But this requires three times this concentration, so 2.4 molar. And because we have such a drastic difference between their solubilities and their salt concentration values, we can basically apply this salting out procedure to isolate this protein out of our mixture. So before we add the salt, we pretty much have this situation as described here. We have these fibrinogen shown in uh, green and the serum albumin shown in purple that are basically existing as individual entities. But as we begin to add that salt and as we add 0.8 molar of ammonium sulfate, the green fibrinogen begins to aggregate because that stabilizes that structure. And so this begins to precipitate and crystallize, but what happens to this one? Well, nothing, because it requires 2.4 molar to actually precipitate. And so while this one will crystallize, the albumin will not crystallize. And what we can do now is apply another method, another technique that we're going to focus on in the next lecture, known as dialysis.
And if we apply dialysis to this particular case, we can basically separate and isolate that fibrinogen from the mixture of this serum albumin. And at that particular point in time, we now have two different beakers. One contains one of these enzymes, one of these proteins, fibrinogen, and the other one contains the other one, albumin. So salting out basically uses the property of protein we call solubility. So because different proteins require different salt concentrations to basically precipitate, we can use this property of proteins to basically isolate and purify our mixture of proteins as we saw in this particular case.